Jacks! Lumberjacks is sponsored by Echo, only professional grade with five-year warranty. Crown, protect, maintain, save. K100, for all your gas-powered equipment, make water burn. Yamaha, rev your heart. We're here in Fredericton, New Brunswick for the 187th edition of the Frex. They now refer to it as the NBX. It's a great celebration of all kinds of agricultural activities with some great things to do for the family held every year in the fall. Not only that, it's the host of the Eastern Canadian Lumberjack Championships where we have 15 top competitors competing for $10,000 in prize money in nine different events. Also a couple of people from Northeastern United States joining us this year. Hi, I'm Bill Debo with my co-host, Lumberjack Sport Analyst and Rod. This week we're covering an event called the Run, Cut and Split, never before seen on Lumberjack's TV series. Very unique event where they actually take three disciplines and throw it all into one event. The competitors have to have a foot race to get the wood, cut the block in half, and then they grab their axes and actually split it into four quarters. And another event very strong here in Eastern Canada is the BOSAW. They do do it all over North America, but it's the Eastern Canadians that are strongest at the BOSAW. And the Eastern Canadians that also manufacture the blades. We have one of those guys here this weekend, Donald Lambert. He's still at the top of his game, about 55 years old and going. And of course, he's being chased right now really hardly by Scott Reed from Nova Scotia and a young up-and-comer from Cape Breton Island, George Williams, and he pulls a fast BOSAW blade. Well, I've been to the fine province of New Brunswick many times over the years, and it's great to be back for the second year in a row here at the Eastern Canadian Lumberjack Championships in Fredericton. And New Brunswick is very, very deep-rooted in the logging industry. And just outside of Fredericton, New Brunswick, we actually have A.V. Nackwick. It's a large pulp and paper mill. They produce a lot of that really nice, high-quality, glossy print paper that you see in a lot of the magazines. And my good buddy from UNB, Michael Blennis, is actually uh, runs that company, and they're a huge supporter of lumberjack sports in, pro in the province and also the collegiate sport. Well, we're going to get into the springboard chop. In total, we had 10 springboard choppers. We're going to be showing you the top four heats. This first heat, a classic matchup with Donald Lambert taking on Marcel Dupuy. And Donald Lambert, man, I call him the Energizer Bunny. He's been at the top of his game now for, what, almost 30 years. Great competitor, but boys, I'll tell you, he has his hands full in this first heat with Marcel Dupuy. He's at the top of his game. We used to call Marcel the up-and-comer. No longer is he the up-and-comer. Up he has arrived. Now he's being chased by the Cumberland boys, and he's already up at his first board. Donald struggling with his first notch. You can see pretty sloppy knots here. The board pops out. If your notches don't meet nicely at the back end of that of the uh, notch, it, that's exactly what happens. You'll see the board pop out of the, the tree, and a good thing it actually happened before we get up on top of it. Cruising along is Marcel Dupuy on his second board, well into his wood up there, up top there. Nice clean lines, and that wood is coming apart nicely. It's fresh 10-inch round uh, aspen wood, and again, his axes are chopping it really nicely. Marcel Dupuy is just blistering. His block It's falling apart well for him. It looks like he's going to be sub one minute in this springboard. Lambert can Continues to struggle with his second notch. He gets up on his board well behind Marcel at this point, and Dupuis wins the first heat of springboard chop in a time of 47.16 as Don Lambert struggles to the finish. You had some decisions to make on that second notch there. You were going to go in, you weren't going to go in, you took about six hits, then you decide not to go in, left that chip in there. Yeah, uh, I think I would have been better off going on four. Like at four, it was a good pocket. Then in my mind, I said, oh, I'm going to put six to go deep. But then my last two hits didn't do any work and then had that chip flopping and I said, oh, I'll, just, I'll just drive it in tight. But it seemed to work out now because it was a small wood up top, but take chances like that on small wood, but on big wood, I would have paid for it for sure. Your, your board sagged a little bit. Did it sag because of that? Oh, for sure, yeah. It was not tight uh, uh, on a V there, so. Okay. Thanks, Marcel. Thank you. I'm Ben Cumberland. I'm from Keswick Ridge, New Brunswick, and I'm applying to be an RCMP officer. Hi, I'm Craig Morris. I'm from Danville, Vermont, and I'm a road worker. Well, we've seen Craig Morris a couple of times on Lumberjack's TV series. He's joining us here as one of the few Americans at the Eastern Canadian Lumberjack Championships here in Fredericton, taking on your young man, Ben Cumberland, and look at Ben going. Ben, actually, great job on his first notch here. Four-stroke notch, that's what you want to see most guys. One down, one flat, another one down, another one flat. If you do it well, it should be a four-stroke notch. Ben will be happy with that. As he wheels into his second notch, you want to be up and chopping your block in under 20 seconds to get underneath that one-minute time limit for the entire chop. Well, Craig Morris is on his first board, working on his second notch right now. You can see the intensity in Ben's face, and he's got quite a steep angle on that second board. 
been scared to death of height. So, of course, when he gets up there, that little loop you see on the top of his board, we actually put that on there. It gives him a little bit more confidence on the top of his board because he is. He gets like Jamie Coger. He gets up there and he, he scrunches his toes up. He gets scared to death. But he's wheeling in the block now. It's coming apart really well for him. So he's well on his way to a good time here on the springboard. Craig puts a couple of no more blows into his second notch there, cleans out the chips with his hands. Ben Cumberland working his way into the small wood right now as it looks like his block is coming a little bit loose. He makes a switch over to the backside without moving his feet at all. Craig Morris just getting into his block now. Craig Morris got a nice block there. Ben's got to really reach across to get this far wood. And Ben brings it off at 102.5. That's actually not a bad time as Craig Morris gets into the small wood. First board, four hits. Jump up there like a little jackrabbit. Second board, a little more time and not that good a set. You're on a real steep angle, eh? Yeah, I just didn't get my bottom swing to angle up a little bit because if it angles up, your board will sit about horizontal, which is perfect. Now, when you go to your backside up top there, you don't move your feet. A lot of people turn around and get a nice swing action there. You're taking some straight drivers down. Don't even move your feet. Looks kind of awkward. Um, it is a bit awkward. Um, Mark Etcheberry from the States used to do it. He had a metal toe cap on his board. I've just got a strap, but it's it's just quicker, and I can get more power pulling across my body than I can just turn around and switch hitting. Well, we got a great field of competitors in the springboard shop here at the Eastern Canadian Lumberjack Championships. Right now, it's Ben Cumberland and Marcel Dupuy leading the way. Well, there's always all kinds of activity going on in downtown Fredericton. Just before the show got started, we had a chance to talk to Deputy Mayor Eric McGarrity. Well, City of Fredericton is the capital of New Brunswick, 57,000 people. Uh, we have, uh, we're a smart, sustainable city. Uh, we call ourselves the littlest, best city in Canada. It's the city of place, and when you come here, uh, you enjoy the events that, that go on from summer, spring, winter, fall, uh, when you go back home, you never forget. You never forget the place, so you always want to come back. That's what's special about Fredericton. The Frex, the, it, the Frex is that trade, NB Frex X now it's called. It's, it's very important, not only to our city, but to, to, to the province, per se. We get a lot of people coming in to, to partake in a lot of the events. Uh, cotton candy, and you gotta come here to taste the Dippy Dogs. It's world famous. Well, Lumberjack Championships is third year in a row here. We're very proud to have them. Uh, they, they garner a lot of support, and it's and it's. You would think that it's not exciting, but I'll tell you, when you come here and you watch some of these, they're actually top-notch athletes. It's a sport. Uh, they really get the crowd involved, and it's it's just a great event. And you know, uh, there's going to be a lot of wood cut this this weekend. So, come on out. Well, it's great to have the city of Fredericton support the competition and the Frex over all these years. We have two more heats in the springboard chop. Right now, Marcel Dupuy from Membrum Cook, New Brunswick, is leading with 47.16. That's going to be a tough time to take down. But we got Nathan Cumberland, Mario Bork, ready to try and tackle the challenge. Mario Bork's had a great summer in springboard chops. He's doing a great job with his notch. He's getting up in under 20 seconds. Young Nate Cumberland here. He's also another guy scared of heights, but boys, Nathan's brought his A game here to the springboard chop as well. Mario's up on his first board. Nathan right there hanging tough with him as he pulls his axe out of his wood. Mario into his second notch. It's looking good right now. He's got to clean it up a little bit. Nathan Cumberland's getting really deep notches. He's a big 260-pound boy, so he's got to make sure his notch is nice and deep. Mario, not quite as large of a lad. He can get away with a lot more when he puts his springboards in. Well, Mario was watching Marcel go a little bit earlier. He knows he's got a tough time to take down a 47.16. Mario's giving it everything he can. Nathan just getting settled up on his second board right now. See that you can see Mario Burke's got a really rough block here. He actually just chopped it through the middle of the uh, some dark stuff there. He's trying to get those chips out, get in the small wood and switch around. But look at that ugly piece of poplar here for Mario. Nathan not happy with the second board. He no, he's got to be safe up there. He's going back to the drawing board on his second notch. Mario Bork blocks it off there with a time of 50.74. Good enough for second place right now in the springboard chop as Nathan is working on his second notch still. Oh, and he's not going to be too happy about that. My name is Paul Woodland. I'm from Benton, New Brunswick, and I'm a logger. My name's Scott Reed. I'm from Truro, Nova Scotia, and I work at the Dalhousie Agricultural Campus as an instructor. Well, that was a great effort by Mario with a 50.74. Good enough for second place in the springboard chop as we head into our last heat. And Mario only came three seconds short of Marcel's 47 seconds. Woodland taking on Reed. 
Paul Willen, of course, he's a veteran competitor in the league. He's been around a long time. He does his notches well, does his chops well, but the speed just is not there now. There's no, not a lot of gas left in that tank. But Scott Reed, he's up and coming, and he's really trying his best to track down the guys here in the springboard chop. You notice his pole. Look at that black stuff there in the middle. He's got to go a little bit deeper and be careful with this to make sure his, his uh, board will stay on the horizontal. And if you look at Scott Reed's second notch, it looks like it's a little bit higher out of his comfort zone as he cleans out the last few chips. He goes back in there with his axe, but he looks like he's chopping almost breast height there really high but again he must uh, it all depends on where the notches are in his block up on top he's got to do quite a climb here to get up on it look at he taking all that effort to jump that body weight up on that top block as paul woodland gets into the block chopping here and woodland is right up close to the tree as well he's not able to get the power generated that he'd probably like to if he was a little bit further back on his board he's making good work on his wood here as he's really moving it and paul woodland you can see that he runs that same axe he's got uh, the electrical tape wrapped around the end of it i always know when he's swinging that axe it chops pop a little bit better than some of his other axes, but it's not the best axe in his box. Well, Scott Reed has got messy lines there right now, but it looks like he's tracking down Woodland as Woodland's running out of gas here. Scott Reed is caught up and past Woodland as he's into his small wood on the front side. And look at the difference in how their axes are chopping this block. Scott Reed's axe is just chewing this poplar live. Paul Woodland, again, it's, the chips aren't moving for him. Uh, Scott Reed's going to be turning around and driving this off on the backside very shortly. Well, I'm sure Paul would admit that he's way too close to the log to get as much power as he'd like to generate. Scott Reed is driving things off, and he comes off in just over 133, but not good enough to crack a top five. Well, that pretty much wraps it up. So the springboard chop here at the New Brunswick Exhibition. The Cumberland boys crack the top five, but it's Muriel Bork and Marcel Dupuy that finish one and two. Well, here we are back in Fredericton, New Brunswick for the Eastern Canadian Lumberjack Championships and the 187th edition of the New Brunswick Exhibition, where every Labor Day weekend, families come out in droves to enjoy the activities. Hi, my name is Nathan Cumberland. I'm from Keswick Ridge, New Brunswick, and I'm in my graduating year at Cumberland Homeschool. Hello, my name is Jeff Larkin. I'm a beef farmer from Middle Muscadabit, Nova Scotia. Well, we've got two farm boys here going head-to-head -head in the first seat with Nathan and Jeff Larkin. Jeff actually did a lot of this at the Nova Scotia Agriculture College, so he should be a little bit better bow sawyer. Well, it's one cut each of each competitor, 10 inches round of Aspen, a couple different styles here. Look at the speed of Nathan Cumberland, but Jeff Larkin is dropping a lot quicker with a slower pace, dropping his saw, and Jeff Larkin sets a time to beat in the first seat with a 5.4. I mean, a one-cut race is a real sprint there. Just tell me how important the start is. Oh, it's vital. You, you, you got to get the start right, and you can't fetch up. You fetch up, you're done. It's going to be milliseconds between first and fifth. I mean, you got some good competitors here in the Maritimes, uh, you know, including Donald Lambert from Quebec, and he's still yet to come. Are you confident with your time? We will see. I always want to be confident when you're doing this sport, but there's, there's some pretty good competitors coming up. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. Absolutely, we still have three more heats of Bow Sawyers here, including Ben Cumberland taking on Mario Bork, time to beat 5.42, set by Jeff Larkin in the first heat, and the Bow Saw is exactly that. It is a sprint. And again, neither one of these guys would say the Bow Saw is their signature event, so it should be fun to watch Mario take it on Ben. Well, it's so critical to have a good spark there. A little bit of a hang-up there by Ben Cumberland. Mario's into the wood. Looks like Mario's slightly ahead at this point, and Mario Bork just edges out Ben Cumberland with a time of 6.45. Big smile by Ben. He must be saving it all for the accidents. A uh, real close race there with Mario, but uh, I think your start costs you. You get a little bit cautious at the start, right? Yeah, I've, uh, I've screwed up a few uh, bow saws this year, just going fast right off the top and getting crooked. So you're kind of trying to play come from behind right of the gate there because of your first two strokes really soft. Yeah, just making sure that it's straight and that I'm not going crooked through the rest of it so I don't cut out. Thanks, Ben. Hey, thank you. Well, you can see a lot of deliberate downward strokes there for Ben Cumberland, and I'm sure he's going to win a lot of races in the future. He just got edged out there by Mario Bork, the second to last heat, big Matt Galambos, taking on Scott Reed. This is the battle of the heavyweights. And again, these guys can run a bow, so you want to watch this. Scott Reed is really uh, tracking down Donald Lambert right now, but Matt Galambos is one of the fastest cutters in eastern North America. Time to beat 5.42, and Matt Galambos rips things off with a 4.3, putting him in first place right now. Great job by Matt Galambos representing America here at the Frex. So Matt, just before the heat gets started there, I hear Rod Cumberland announcing that, uh, my goodness, two big guys with big shoulders. How much do you have to put on uh, some weight on there? Yeah, it, it's a big part of the event is putting weight on it, um, but it's also finding a balance for the right speed with the weight, and that's why this is such a difficult event. A lot in the blade, eh? How much can your blade handle in this wood, right? Exactly. You got to know how many strokes you can do it in and how fast you can make the strokes. Thanks, Matt. 
Thank you. Once again, looking at the replay, you can see Big Matt, the amount of pressure he puts on that saw, going through that wood, and he finishes on a pull stroke, ripping off the cookie. Big Matt Galambos with a 4.33. If anybody could take it down, it's Donald Lambert taking on Dupuis again. You typically, you never see Don laying on his blade like that. He seems a little bit laid back. He's not at the top of his game here today at the NBX, but look at the pace on Donald Lambert as he gets halfway through this log. And he struggles right at the very end there. That's going to cost him. Don Lambert clocks in with a 5.19, only good enough for second place, and Galambos wins the Bosaw. So before going into that heat, you knew you had to get under five seconds. You were might be getting close to that, but uh, what happened at the very end? Well, I was putting some pressure on on the tool, and uh, just my I left I left my front foot, or it just slipped on the bit uh, the surface. I don't really know what happened. Well, we have a little stage here that with a little bit of oil and a little bit of uh, uh, other uh, things on the stage like sawdust. It's a little bit slippery. You do have spikes, though. Are the spikes working? Yeah, my spikes are good. <laughs> you just lifted your foot. I just probably lift my foot, so. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Well, a little bit of lifting of the foot for Donald Lambert may have cost him the victory. With a 5.19, it was only good enough for second place. Closed captioning is brought to you by PartyPoker.net. The game is changing. Qualify your way to the World Poker Tour today at PartyPoker.net. And we are not at the duck races. We are actually at the Eastern Canadian Lumberjack Championships. We are headed into an event called the Run, Cut, and Split. And it's being hosted by the Eastern Canadian Lumberjack Championships. This is a doubles event. This first one is going to feature a pair of women, Caitlin Carroll and Heather Maciel, taking on Lambert and Morris. Run, cut, split, very interesting event again. The foot race is pretty much the same. This really comes down to splitting the wood because they all run pretty much the same pace. They bring the wood back. All the blades cut through this small wood pretty much the same. It really comes down to how fast you can get your four blocks off. Well, they're going to saw the three or four inch diameter piece of aspen in half. Both competitors are equipped with an axe and they've got to quarter it. You can see the blue dot on the top there. You've got to have four full-length pieces, all with some paint on them. The trick is to get that first hit right on the money. If you don't split your block right down the middle and you get all the dot on one side, then you can take all your pieces out of that one piece that's left. And the only rules for the game here are you have to use your axe to split the wood. You can't rip it apart with your hands. Heather Maciel still struggling a little bit as Lambert and Morris finished with a 30.8. First observation is that uh, you got one of the best buck sawyers or bow sawyers around here. Did his saw go through that wood a little bit quicker than you thought? Oh, I don't know. I, I think I just didn't hold it. Hold the wood right. It's the first time doing it. And lessons learned. So I think two or three strokes, your, your saw was through that wood, so it happened really quickly. Uh, well, wood is very, uh, very soft, so it goes well. Now, uh, when you go to quarter the wood, uh, you just hold on to one piece and try and get as many pieces out of one piece, right, with your hand? Yeah, that's what I try to do. Yeah. The, goal, the goal is to have four pieces with uh, painted on, on, so that's it. Merci beaucoup. Bienvenue. Well, a couple of corrections, Bill. First of all, they're called dippy dogs, not dippy dogs. And number two, apparently you can pull them apart with your hands because Don Lambert just did it, did not get a DQ. Don Lambert and I actually did this event a little bit earlier in the year, and we actually split at the same time, took a DQ, so Donald knows we're not splitting at the same time as we get ready to go here for the second heat of the run cut split. This next heat, we got we got Paul Wood and Marcel Dubuis taking on Vince Maciel and Big Mac Galambos as they get ready for the bow saws, and it's a dead heat right now. These are the heavyweights at the NBX here right now in the run cut split as the guys stand their blocks up again. Get ready to split. Marcel Dupuis, first one, and they're just going for it right now. Well, Woodland and Dupuis have done this lots of times here in Eastern Canada, and they just about finished things off here with a 20.6 seconds and lower the time to beat as Galambos and Maciel struggle to the finish. So in uh, talking to Mr. Woodland, he said we had a plan. Now, sometimes you guys don't always share your plan. What was your plan? Uh, ask the big boss there. He's got the plan. Okay, so what was the plan there? Oh, it's just once we uh, start to split, he'll finish his block, and then he'll watch me make sure he hit the dot in both hits. So it's like an extra set of eyes in the work that you're doing. So you're watching him to be able to give him uh, the, the signal whether you got three, four, or five? Exactly. Like, yeah, if uh, you don't really have a chance all the time to see the, the dot, so if I can help him out, that's what I'll, I'll be doing on, that, on the run. Veteran competitors, thank you. Thank you. 
Well, in Lumberjack Sports, whenever you're involved in a doubles event, communication is one of the keys to success. And Mario and Scott have done this lots at the college ranks, the quarter split event specifically, taking on the young Cumberland men. I definitely give the uh, Scott and Mario the edge here as far as experience goes. The young fellows, oh, Nathan and Ben, they can, uh, they've can. they got speed, they've got power, they've got uh, commitment here. It's funny that Nathan is really a high-strung guy and Ben's the guy running here. Well, 20.63 is a time to be set by Woodland and Dupree in the last heat. Both teams are neck and neck right now, but they're getting into the first blocks with their axes in hand. And as predicted at the start, it all comes down to splitting the block. Mario Burke, he's got his axe in two blocks of wood at once. He's really got a good pace going here. He's been struggling to get that second uh, split going. Both pair of competitors into the second cutters right now. It's Scott Reed taking on Nathan Cumberland, and Reed and Bork coming with a 26.02, only good enough for second place. Uh, a couple of issues there. I mean, we pretty smooth, but uh, you had a couple of uh, pieces that were very, very close there. Couldn't get them attached from your axe. Yeah, they were all stringy and stuff, and I grabbed the different axe at the, at the last minute there because it was I wanted a smaller axe because it was splitting pretty easy, but then it was just sticking to them, so it was a little bit trouble, but it worked that way anyway. So you're walking a fine line there as to when you should start going, making sure that he's actually done. We'll watch the video replay, but it was pretty close that so you were swinging and he still had that friggin' fiber stuck to his axe. Yeah, I had him out of the corner of my eye. I think I was coming down just, just when he said go. So, uh, but uh, I was pretty sure he was gonna stop swinging. <laughs> uh, but I had the same fiber problem, so yeah, it's good. Thanks, guys. Well, the splitting portion of this event actually originated at the college level. Here we have the pros doing it with three separate disciplines. Dupuy and Woodland win it with a 20.63. And the crown pivotal point today focuses on Scott Reed and Mario Bork, who come desperately close to getting a DQ here, and the run cut is split, but they pull it off just by a whisker and make it to the scoreboard. And our overall standings after one third of the way through the competition here at the New Brunswick Exhibition, we got a classic leaderboard with Dupuy, a familiar face, leading the way with 200 points. And the gas guzzler lumberjack of the day is Matt Galambos from America, who wins the boast on a blistering 4.33 seconds. Lumberjacks is sponsored by Echo, only professional grade with five-year warranty. Crown, protect, maintain, save, quick dam, the new alternative to heavy sandbags. Yamaha, rev your heart. I'm applying to be an RCMP officer. I'm a road worker. Technical specialist for Rico Canada. And I'm a high school student. And I'm an electrician. My job is counselor is my uncle. I am a returning student to Dalhousie Agricultural Campus. And I'm a firefighter for the city of Moncton. And I work for Correction Service Canada. And I am an arborist and a webmaster. And I'm in my graduating year at Cumberland Home School. And I'm a logger. And I work at the Dalhousie Agricultural Campus as an instructor. And I am an arborist. I'm a beef farmer from Middle Muscadabit, Nova Scotia. <laughs> <laughs>